Hey, mushroom fans, it's Anna McHugh. I am out on a uh, steamy and trafficy Tuesday afternoon uh, looking at some common mushroom species that I want to share with you. Uh, so I have uh, picked this particular quiet filming location in the midst of four lanes of traffic because of this beautiful fruiting of uh, Areobolitis betula that I've found. And so I want to show you these mushrooms. They're really good edible mushrooms. And these are probably some of the most beautiful specimens that I have seen, certainly this season. And like, they're just, they're just the bee's knees and the grasshopper's elbows and the sloss toes, all those different things. I also want to talk to you about a poisonous mushroom and uh, then uh, russula mushrooms and lactarius mushrooms because those are two big genera that you're going to find really regularly. Identifying them to species can be really tri tricky or impossible, but being able to recognize two genus, it gives you a lot of uh, basic mastery of the mushrooms in your environment. And that's also really helpful because uh, Lactarius and Russula mushrooms are uh, popular edibles with some folks. I'm not particularly fond of them, but that's more of a like, I don't want to eat mushrooms all the time and I have, you know, my favorites. Uh, but anyhow, so it's good to, you know, recognize these mushrooms so you can get to know them, but I'm not going to make a lot of like edibility recommendations except to say that uh, many of them are consumed in a variety of ways and uh, you know you can definitely look into that and uh, get sucked into a variety of rabbit holes related to Lactarius and Russula in general. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to talk to you first about probably the most important mushroom from a safety perspective that uh, you can learn in uh, North Carolina, I would say. So this is Amanita bisporigera, uh, commonly called the destroying angel. We do have uh, in North Carolina and the Eastern US, numerous species that are, that are called destroying angels. But Amanita bisporigera, as far as we know, it's the most common one in this area. So what you have is a fairly diminutive mushroom. Um, you know, it's a cap and stem deal. It is white overall. This uh, specimen, unfortunately, is a little dried out, but when they're fresh, they're like, you know, like a tissue that's just been pulled out of the box. They're just icy white, really beautiful. Uh, so, you know, again, white all overall, including, uh, you know, its gills. You also have a really beautiful and delicate, um, you know, ring on the stem that's kind of skirt-like. And then additionally, and most importantly for identifying this mushroom, is uh, the material at the stem base. And so what you have is a cup of tissue that is essentially, it is distinct from the mushroom itself. You can see it is, uh, it's what you would describe as a, uh, a saccate vulva. So essentially it is, a, again, like uh, the mushroom has, has emerged from a little egg of tissue that protects it. And when that happens and, uh, you know, the, the egg bursts, then you have a cup of tissue that remains at the base. There are mushrooms that are not toxic, that resemble uh, destroying angels, that it is not a cup so much as a, sort of like a lumpy, bumpy, knobby thing uh, with a little bit of a lobe. And that's the uh, Amanita lavendula group. So, uh, you know, suffice it to say, this cup is really an important feature for uh, Amanita bisporigera and its relatives. So, uh, as far as what would happen to me if I ate this mushroom, I would start to feel sick anywhere between, you know, six to uh, 20 hours afterwards. I would, you know, get ill and expel all of the mushroom and start to feel better. And at that point, I could suffer uh, liver failure and or kidney failure. And so, you know, this is a mushroom that is potentially deadly. Survival rates in uh, North America are really high, but that's because we have good treatment options. So the best choice is to simply avoid eating uh, destroying angel mushrooms. As you can see, it's totally, you know, safe for me to handle it. I could take it home with me and, you know, dehydrate it and, you know, like not worry about breathing the air in my house while that process is going down. Uh, I can interact with this mushroom pretty much in any way except for eating it. Now, that said, I'm going to wash my hands and all the good stuff. But nonetheless, like in order to get amatoxin poisoning and that amatoxins are the kind of, um, you know, toxins that are in this mushroom that will shut down your liver. Uh, you have to eat and digest them in order for that to be, uh, you know, for that, uh, the, the symptoms to emerge. So anyway, Amanita bisporigera, a very important mushroom to learn and recognize and appreciate because it is one of our most beautiful mushrooms. And I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, folks who are, you know, folks who become, who are poisoned by them are attracted to them because they are 
just uh, stinking beautiful. So I'm going to leave that one here. Uh, let's talk now about this Areobolitis betula. So the uh, common name for this mushroom is the shaggy stem bolete. And I'm going to collect this mushroom um, actually using sort of best practices if I were gonna bring it home to identify. So I'm actually gonna like dig it up at the base. I'm not gonna go too deep here, but one thing that you will also see, and this is like uh, not something that happens very frequently when you, uh, you know, responsibly harvest a mushroom for identification, which involves collecting the whole fruiting body. One of the things that makes Oreo bolita spatula really recognizable besides its fruiting body, like above ground is really, really uh, distinct. I'll go over that. It always comes up with a huge clump of white mycelium. And by way of contrast, I have uh, another bolete type mushroom here. So boletes are like spongy underneath and these look very similar in some respects. But you know, I pulled this guy the same way that I did the other one and you can see sort of yellowish mycelium. Areobolita spatula almost always comes up with this like lateral, uh, you know, sort of foot of uh, white mycelium. So that is an important thing to note. If you're collecting for, uh, you know, consumption, I would certainly not bother with like uprooting the whole thing, especially because now, as you can see, I have all kinds of forest stuff and so forth. Uh, but anyhow, you know, that is a really, uh, one of the things Areobolita spatula is famous for is it's, it's uh, white mycelium foot. In addition to that, it is, as I mentioned, a bolete type mushroom. So you have a nice sponge underneath. It's, a, it's sort of lemony yellow when it's in its best condition. You have a red to orange. Sometimes uh, when they get older, it's more yellow cap. It can be a little tacky, a little bit on the shiny side. And sometimes this specimen doesn't have uh, the smaller ones. I'll show you one of the smaller ones in a minute. Oh, you can see it actually pretty well here. So it's a nice uh, like yellowish rim on the perimeter of uh, the mushroom's cap. And then the thing that gives this mushroom its name, the shaggy stalk bolete, is the fact that its stem is shaggy. And it's shaggy in a very specific way. So you have red underneath and then a yellow sort of interlocking pattern of uh, shags. And you can fairly easily, this one's fairly dry, but you can, you know, kind of scrape it off. Well, can't scrape it off very well. Oh, there we go. Okay. So here we are. So you can scrape off those yellow shags without too much difficulty. And then you see this sort of dark, like uh, cherry red underneath. If you open up the mushroom, you have sort of a lighter interior. These have a really nice sort of um, uh, citrusy flavor. So I'm gonna actually take these dudes home with me and uh, roast them and eat them. Uh, let's see, so I'm gonna show you the smaller specimen just because it's so gorgeous. I'm gonna leave that butt here, but uh, you know, sometimes they will be, as you can see, far more like cherry red on top. And that little, uh, you know, yellow rim is just so attractive to me. That's, uh, I always think that's the aura in Oreo Bolitas because it's uh, Oreo and then Bolitas, which is, um, you know, uh, the sort of big family that contains uh, these spongy bottom mushrooms. So uh, this is a good edible, definitely um, really good for beginners because it lacks, uh, you know, it has lookalikes. Those lookalikes tend to be non-toxic or, uh, you know, uh, really bitter and you can't eat them. Boletes are very, can be very challenging, but uh, this specific species is kind of hard to mistake for others on account of the fact that it's like tall, slender, it has this big mycelium foot and uh, the shaggy stem is also, you know, really distinct. I'll give you one more image of it here. So it's, you know, interlocking, widely spaced and yellow and uh, then with red underneath. Okay. Uh, I also want to talk to you about a beautiful specimen I found of Ganoderma uh, curtisi. So this is one of our most common uh, wood decomposing mushrooms uh, called the golden reishi, commonly. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, you have a mushroom that is oftentimes like really woody or corky. It looks really uh, varnished, uh, especially, you know, when it is fresh. As these mushrooms mature, oftentimes you'll get sort of a smoky uh, appearance or overlay on top and they also start to turn like almost purpley. So sometimes you'll get, uh, you know, less of a shiny varnish surface and more of a like uh, a little bit of a, a sh again, an overshadow. It, it's kind of fun. Uh, as far as, you know, its other coloration, you can see everywhere from sort of a nice uh, sienna color to this golden color and hence the golden reishi. 
uh, this uh, you know particular fruiting body I wanted to show you because it is so very iconic for uh, reishi in general. So you have this nice long neck that was growing from uh, you know the the uh, the base of a an oak tree, and uh, then once you you know get to the top, you have this nice little uh, you know disc essentially with different growth zones and not you know not all of these mushrooms are nearly as like uh picturesque as this one i have a younger one that has sort of the same sort of like starship enterprise or loch ness monster look big fan um some people use them medicinally i'm going to leave them here uh because i have neither the time nor the patience for such things all right uh let's Keep moving. I want to talk to you really briefly about this cute little fella, Amanita flavaconia. So this is a mushroom you will find really commonly in the summertime. Common name is yellow patches. Unfortunately, this specimen has lost its yellow patches, but it's an Amanita that comes up uh, and instead of having that like cup I was showing you with the, um, with the Amanita by Sporagera with the destroying angel, instead of a cup, you have like a little bit of flaky uh, yellow tissue and it's just a little bit enlarged at the base. And this is another example of like, I harvested this for identification and I didn't get a big old clump of mycelium like I did with Arioboleta specula. So more examples abound as to why that species and its, uh, its base is like really robust. Uh, so anyway, you have a little mushroom, it's sort of an orangey color uh, and uh, oftentimes has yellow patches on top, yellow uh, sort of, um, I don't know, powdery yellow material at the base and then a nice little ring on the stem. It's very, very delicate. And then uh, white gills, but you oftentimes have like slight tinges of sort of yellowish and it's just sort of a, you know, beautiful yellow orangey mushroom overall and tends to be relatively uh, small in size. So Amanita um, flavaconia, yellow patches, uh, a little bit on the tacky side, that one's also staying here. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna conclude really briefly, but I wanna talk about uh, Russula and I wanna talk about Lactarius. And again, this is in a very uh, general sense. So Russula mushrooms, uh, I've got two different species here. Uh, you have a whole lot of different, you know, species of them and you can spend a lot of time studying them. Uh, they're, despite the fact that these two mushrooms look like really radically different in a lot of ways, they share uh, very noticeable characteristics. Uh, primarily, Russulas are really brittle, so they break apart, you know, just like chalk. You know, this one is a little bit less so because it's been eaten on the inside. You can see it's a little hollowed out by bugs. Uh, but, you know, a Russula that's in good condition, you just sort of like, it, it just, ex it, let's see if I can get a, nope. There we go. Explodes on impact. Here's another one. Let's see if we can, all right, I think that was much better. So, as you can see, Russulas are just like gloriously explosive. Um, and, you know, some of them are peppery hot, and so they can't be consumed on the basis of that. Um, others, you know, you can uh, eat and you pickle. There's a whole bunch of different ways of preparing them. And uh, so I want to highlight this particular Russula, however, because, you know, the dude I just threw over there is really large compared to most Russula species. So this is more of an average uh, of what <clears throat> the Russula genus looks like. So oftentimes they're brightly colored. You know, this one is more of a like rose color, but a lot of times they're bright red, sometimes, uh, you know, more of a dark purple, but you have a lot of the, you know, red to purple tones. You also have green ones and like all kinds of stuff going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, but red and pink are really common. Uh, and then, you know, you have white gills underneath. The, this fruiting body, as I mentioned, is dried out. And so, you know, it, it, it is a lot more waffly than uh, the ones that I just exploded. But, you know, nonetheless, they remain really brittle. And uh, also, you know, you have in this case a nice little uh, sort of pinky blush at the top of the stem. That is, an <clears throat> that is actually kind of an unusual feature for a Russula. A lot of times it's like, the only color occurs on the very cap and then uh, the rest of the fruiting body is just white and the whole thing is brittle and explodes. Okay, so that's Russula, lots and lots of them and uh, very, <clears throat> very worth your time to get to know. I'm gonna have some water, I keep. I'm gonna wear some water too. All right, thank you for bearing with me. 
Um, before we go, I want to talk about Lactarius. Uh, this one, wow, I didn't clean it up at all. I thought I had. All right. So, uh, Lactarius mushrooms, you have, a, again, a, a lot of different species of them. This one is a giant orange Lactarius. It is not Lactarius deliciosus group, which is one of the more common sort of orange uh, Lactarius mushrooms. I'm going to take this home and mess with it. Like, I, I don't know exactly which it is, and I haven't taken the time in the past. But these big orange, uh, you know, Lactarius mushrooms are pretty common. And uh, the, essentially, why they're called Lactarius is because they uh, produce a milk or juice when you damage them. So as I cut it up, you can see there's like little droplets of white juice. And uh, Lactarius mushrooms, sometimes it's blue juice, sometimes it's white juice that then stains a different color. You have all kinds of different lact uh, la latex and uh, lactating reactions from these mushrooms. So that's the first thing you'll notice with uh, Lactarius. Another thing uh, that is noteworthy is that a lot of times they have these really distinct concentric growth zones and you have sort of a mushroom that has a big, like when mature, a big divot in the middle and then these, uh, you know, really clearly articulated uh, growth zones of one kind or another. And uh, it oftentimes they're really uh, brittle, uh, especially these big old dudes, they're brittle in the way that Russellas are. But those, uh, you know, for Lactarius, that concentric pattern and also the, uh, you know, bleeding gills are really a giveaway. This doesn't have like what I would call abundant uh, latex, but it's definitely noticeable. Uh, so anyway, that's all I've got for today. I've made quite a mess and I'm starting to get bitten up by bugs. I hope you're having a good mushroom season. It has been really wonderful to see everything go off. I'm out, uh, you know, besides making videos, I'm also picking up some chanterelle mushrooms. So I'm making or endeavoring to make uh, some chanterelle bacon uh, this evening. And so uh, wish me the best of luck with that and find lots of things. I love you very much. I hope you're great and we'll see you next time.